In today's video, I'm going to be taking this palette and putting all of my Grumbacher Academy watercolors into it. I apologize if you can hear my fan in the background. I live in Florida and it is very warm right now, especially in my room upstairs. So that'll be coming in and out probably. But let's go ahead and open this up and get started. All right, here's the palette. I got it on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. So I was debating on if I was going to pop all of these open and take the pans out to fill, but I think I'm just gonna leave them in here and fill it like that just to save a little bit of time. Just to start off, I'm going to clean this palette. Uh, I wanna make sure that there's no oils or residues on it from the manufacturing. I've just got a spray bottle here with some rubbing alcohol in it. And I'm just going to give it a nice little spray and then use some paper towels and a few q-tips to clean it out. For the cleaning of the palette, I try and be very thorough, wiping out all of the little crevices and all of the wells and then taking a q-tip and going individually into each and every single pan to make sure that all of the oil or residue from manufacturing is out I do this to make sure that the watercolors that I put in actually stick into the pans. If there was any oil or residue, they might fall out once the pans are dry. Okay, so now that it's clean, I'm going to go ahead and just pull this tray out and put this to the side. Just so I have a little bit more workspace. So, like I said, we are going to be using my... Rumbacher Academy watercolors. So these are like the student grade watercolors, I would say. Um, I need to put them in a color order so I know how I'm going to put them in the palette and also so I can make a chart to put inside the palette with it. So I'm going to do that real quick. This is the color order I have settled on so we'll go ahead and get them put in the palette in this order. Um, instead of just writing them all down like this right away, I'm just going to take a picture. That way I know the order and won't have to worry about it. And then if I get them mixed up at all, I can just reference the picture again to put them in the palette in the correct order. Pretty much it's just rainbow order. I didn't worry about like which ones were cool tones or warm tones because when I do the reference sheet, it won't really matter. And because the palette has the removable pans, I can change the order up anytime I want and add new pans in whenever because in the palette I have four rows of 13 pans each. I'm only going to take up three rows, well only two full rows and one partial third row so it won't be a big deal if I get new colors. It's easy to rearrange them into a new order that I like. So let's go ahead and get started. For the actual process of filling the palette with the watercolors, I just try and do my best to make the watercolors go in evenly. I make sure to move the tube of watercolor around the whole pan starting from the center and moving to all the corners while I squeeze the tube gently. I also try to avoid overfilling the pans. I try and leave just a little bit of a lip at the top of the pan. I just do this to make sure that there's no overflow. You'll notice with some of these watercolors, um, they are different consistencies. So some of them are super thick and some of them are very thin. And if I were to overfill the pans with some of these thinner watercolors, it would make just a huge mess. I'm also using this clay, I believe it's a reamer tool, to kind of push around the watercolor and make sure that it is all the way to the corners of the pans. This is again just to make sure that when the paints dry it adheres really well to the to the pans. If I didn't do this I was a little worried that it would leave air pockets in the watercolor inside the pans which would make it a little more prone to falling out. That's like one of the worst things when filling palettes or with any dry watercolor palette is that sometimes the watercolor will just detach from the pans and fall straight out. 
while this is not an end of the world crisis situation, it is annoying and it's easy to fix it. You can usually just put a little bit of water at the bottom of the pan and it'll reattach the watercolor. This is a good example of one of the thinner watercolors making a big mess. Um, it had an air bubble in the tube, so when I was squeezing it, it like got stuck in the tube kind of. And also the watercolor itself was kind of separated, so I'm mixing this one up really, really well just to make sure that the additives in it and the binding agents are all mixed into it. Uh, that way when it dries, watercolor works properly. I am really glad that I decided to leave the pans inside the palette for this. It already took such a long time for me to individually put all of the watercolors into the pans. I can't imagine how long it would have taken me on top of that to put all of the pans back in. I also realized while doing this that if I had taken the pans out of the palette first, I probably would have had to wait for them to dry out before I could have put them back into the palette because with how liquid some of these watercolors are and how thin they are, it would have been a huge pain to try and get them to clamp back in without spilling or me sticking my fingers in it and just getting a big mess that way. So in the end, it was a lot faster and a lot cleaner to fill the watercolor palette with the pans still inside. You can see that my cats were extremely curious as to what I was doing at my desk for so long. They keep uh, coming over and smelling the watercolors and trying to be up on the desk and kind of messing up all the paints I had set up in their orders. So that's why you'll see me reach across the frame every now and then. It's me grabbing my cats. Occasionally you'll see their faces pop in. Don't worry though, they did not lick or ingest any of the watercolors, they just kept smelling them. I found the whole process of putting the watercolors into the pan kind of relaxing. It was very methodical and repetitive, but all the same, it was very relaxing. I didn't have to think very hard while I was doing it. I just grabbed the next tube in line, moved it around the pan, flattened it out with the reamer tool and moved on to the next one. I think all in all from start to finish it took me about two hours to fill this watercolor palette that includes cleaning it up and sorting the colors. It also includes what the next step is which would be making the swatch card to put in here. So it didn't take terribly long, but it did take a little while. I used this as an opportunity to catch up on some Bailey J videos and uh, a few other YouTube videos as well. I really just prefer to work with a little bit of background noise, so YouTube videos come in really handy for that. Just a little info on me, I really like long form content on YouTube. I watch and well, I listen to mostly uh, a lot of like documentary style videos on YouTube. I really like deep dive videos and I really enjoy videos where artists do like the draw with me style videos where they work on a piece, maybe start to finish and kind of chit chat through the whole thing. That's kind of what I'm modeling my channel after a little bit. I'm finally on the last few colors to put into the pans, and after this I will be moving into making the swatch card. So off camera, I just cut down a piece of watercolor paper to the size of the lid of my palette just to make sure that it fit in perfectly. I also rounded the corners of the paper I used, which you'll see in just a moment to make sure that it fit nice and snugly inside the palette and there would be no issues with it not fitting. And it also makes it easy to remove out so that I have access to the wells in the lid. And finally, I was able to put the last watercolor in. I was certainly ready to move on at this point. So here you can see I have set up my swatch card to be exactly the same as my watercolor palette setup. So I gritted out 
two rows on the top and bottom and I went through and wrote in the color codes for all of the watercolors that I am putting in the palette. I debated on doing the color names or the color codes and I ultimately went with the color codes because they were shorter and took a little less time. Really the only reason I even need the color codes or the color names in the swatch card is if I ever go to refill any of the colors. I want to make sure that I know which one in the palette it is and what color it is. That way they don't get mixed up. The first few colors I swatched, I did not use nearly enough water with them. That's because as I was filling the palette, the first few colors had just enough time to dry across the top layer. So I initially was thinking that they wouldn't be that dry yet, so I wouldn't need to use quite as much water, but that was a wrong assumption. So I go back and fix those swatches in a little while to be more accurate to how they will actually look. Um, right now they're a little dull and that's just because I didn't pick up enough paint with the brush. Swatching has got to be one of my favorite things to do with my art supplies. I always make swatch cards for all kinds of different types of supplies. Mostly the watercolors and my markers I will have swatches for because they can be a little deceptive on the colors by just looking at either the pan or the tubes or the lids if it's the markers. So by having swatch cards that have an accurate representation of the colors, I can pick the exact color I want almost every single time and not have any weirdness going on. This is another one of those methodical and repetitive tasks that I like to do because I find it a little bit relaxing. So I always enjoy swatching for that reason as well as the utility aspect of it. But I totally understand that some people just do not have the patience to do swatching like this or to even fill a watercolor palette like this. They would much rather just buy things pre-made and kind of wing it, which is totally fine too. You guys can do things your own way and that is perfectly fine. We all have our preferences on how we work and how we store and use our supplies. My preference just so happens to be panned watercolors that are in basically rainbow order as well as having nice swatch cards involved. So I also wanted to talk about while we're doing these last few swatches about how I did in fact include a white watercolor in this palette. I know there is like a huge debate on if you should even use white watercolors and I personally like to have one just in case sometimes I can find it hard to visualize what the watercolor will look like just by leaving the paper showing through. So having a mixing white is beneficial for me but that doesn't make it beneficial for everybody. Um, I understand that some people believe it's a crutch but that is their belief and they're allowed to have that too. As someone who just does this as a hobby, I like things to be kind of easy, so having a white watercolor happens to make my life a little bit easier while painting, so I went ahead and included it. I even swatched it, which was not exactly beneficial, but I did. I just want to thank everybody for watching now that we're here looking at our final product, and I hope you guys will join me next time.